Hello, Bob Kwame here, demonstrating Panoptic. Panoptic is a tool for browsing multi-gigapixel spherical images. Uh, grab it at this website. You can download it for Windows, Mac OS, Linux. It's open source, and all of the imagery that you're about to see is there for the download. Got it running on my Facebook Rift DK1 right here. Um, recording this at 1080p, so hopefully it'll run well on your Facebook DK2 as well. What we're looking at here is data captured by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. This is 100 meter per pixel photographs, wide angle camera photographs, as well as height map that combine give you a strikingly realistic, browsable version of the moon. Just beautiful. I'm going to take some time here, wearing my Facebook hat, to just browse some of this for you and let you look at it. There's a ton of gorgeous imagery here. Actually, I just passed by Hadley Rill. That's where Apollo 14 landed, right in this little area right here. This is the landing site of Apollo 14. Got a bunch of example visualizations. Let me just jump through them right here. Here's a, uh, this is visualization number one. Uh, this was this was zero. This is one height map with uh, the IAU lunar nomenclature uh, overlaid on top of it. This is a good way to get a, a taste of the terrain. This right here is a derivative of the terrain captured by the uh, Lunar Orbiter Laser Altimeter. Um, this data set right here, Mini RF, this is a synthetic aperture radar that recorded, I believe, circular polarity. Right here, the landing site of Apollo 11. This is a high resolution NAC image overlaid atop a low resolution WAC image. If you get real close here, you can actually see. There's the lander with its shadow. I, I marked where the flag and the TV camera would have been. And this, of course, appears in context of the rest of the moon. See a tranquility. Got one more similar one, Apollo 16. This one's loading up here. This one is a little more detailed. You got the lander right here. A lot of footprints, a lot of rover tracks. Here's the ULSEP. You can see where they were walking back and forth, installing instruments. Over on the right here, we got the uh, that's where the rover is. That's where they parked it, left it there, walked back to the uh, lander to take off. There's tracks all over the place. And this is a beautiful area. Mountains, craters, the whole shebang. And of course this appears in the context of the rest of the moon. All of this data is free from NASA, free to download. I've processed it into a form that makes it interactive to display. Oh, here's Tycho Crater. I'm just flying around with an uh, Xbox controller, by the way. Six-axis analog controller. Tycho Crater, one of the most prominent features on the front of the moon. Beautiful casting shadow here. Nice. One of the most interesting places on the moon from the perspective of... Uh, lunar scientists and the future of human exploration is, is, is the South Pole. And this is a global mosaic, right? So it, it's, it was, it's a mosaic of photographs that were taken when the sun was relatively high up. And so the whole moon looks illuminated. But of course, there are places down here at the South Pole that never see the light of the sun, in particular this crater right here. This is at the South Pole. This is Shackleton Crater. Very dramatic shadows and lighting down here, Tab. So this is interesting because the light of the sun never reaches it. We'd like to know what's in there. And because LRO's got a whole bunch of whole bunch of sensors on it, we can see. In the height map, it's really very clear. Here we've got a labeled that's Shackleton. We see the bumps at the bottom of it. The laser altimetry down here is really very fine because the uh, probe was in a polar orbit, so it took many, many measurements down here. And these lines that you see, these are artifacts of the laser altimetry. We also, of course, have the derivative of the laser altimetry. You can see the slope in here. Right there, obviously, that's where the South Pole actually is. We can duck down in here. Ooh. Look at the stars from inside Shackleton Crater. We would never see the sun in here. But we've got plenty of data. 
that lets us peer down into here, in particular, uh, mini RF lets us see in here. Now, I don't know what the interpretation of this data is. I don't know what it means. It looks a little funny, though. You know, that, that curve there, that seems weird. You know, my, my interpretation of that is that the probe sort of saw it about from, from this angle. You see, you see how that lines up? Like a measurement was made from this angle, and that was combined with a measurement from another angle. So whether or not that data is actually useful or meaningful, eh, who knows. But it's, uh, it's a lot better than that right there. There's some really lovely terrain down here in the South Pole. Look at this giant mountain. Let me just, let me get real close here. Look at the size of that thing. It's gorgeous. Just want to climb it. And then all of this, all of this stuff seldom sees the sun.